Hey, what's up? It's your host, Torian, who is ready to be petty. Welcome back to another episode of RTBP. I'm so excited for you to listen to today's episode. Shannon from the Fluently Forward podcast and TikTok account joins me to talk about celebrity gossip and the rise of celebrity blind items into mainstream media. I know Shannon is a new podcaster, but she is the real deal, and I was absolutely thrilled that she said she would come on the podcast. We bounce around to a few different topics, so the timestamps for this episode might be a little harder to follow, but it's a really fun episode, so I hope you enjoy the show. I'm back with a very special guest, the number one podcaster in the entertainment (laughs) news category, Shannon. It varies. (laughs) I will say it does vary. Um, But thank you for, you know, we can we can grade on a curve. Absolutely. (laughs) Like coming from the like 100th to 150th (laughs) podcast in the entertainment news uh, sector. It's a pleasure to have you on the podcast. Thank you for having me on. Excited to be here. So if folks don't know who Shannon is, she runs an amazing TikTok, such a great podcast, Fluently Forward. How did that all begin? Yeah, so Fluently Forward is actually, it's funny because people ask me where mm-hmm. the name comes from. I don't, did you ever have a Tumblr account back no. in like middle school or high no. school? <laughs> God, like me and all the girls in high school had Tumblr accounts and like I made that URL. I would change my URL every week. And like, I thought it was artsy <laughs> or something. And I had just kind of held onto the phrase. And then I started a blog um, maybe five years ago now. And that was the title of it. So when I started my TikTok account, it was just like stupid videos. But then I started talking about blind items on there, thinking that everyone knew what a blind item was. And I found out that a bunch of people didn't, especially Gen Z, I feel like had never really heard of it. So then my account kind of transformed into that. And it was just like celebrity blind items, celebrity conspiracy theories, pop culture. And I don't know if this is something that you could relate to, but I didn't realize how much Mm. I knew about pop culture (laughs) until people were asking me about celebrities. And then I was like, oh my God, like all of this space in my brain, like 15% of it is probably pop culture. And I've been... Really, honestly, it's definitely like internalized misogyny if we're going to go there in the first minute of this podcast. But I always try to downplay my like people are like, oh, what's your hobbies? And I'm like reading and baking, (laughs) like hiking. (laughs) I know. I try not to say it. And then I'm also I don't want to be I don't want to sound double crazy, but like, uh, fuck it. Like, I'm into see, astrology, see. too. So then I'm like, now I'm going to sound insane. I'm into celebrities, conspiracy theories and astrology. I'm like, people are going to want to beat me away with a Absolutely. stick. Like, and I remember just like I sometimes it slips out and I feel like people realize it more than I think they do. But I just remember tweeting when I started my job like about three years ago, I was like, I want to talk about the Bachelorette finale, but my office is like too good for it <laughs> so, yeah, yes. so I'm like hiding <laughs> I will say it is nice working in tech there's always like slack channels where people talk about pop culture and stuff like that and here in New York City we have a slack channel that's all about celebrity sightings because my office is right by the place where they make the infamous cronut and other things like that so sometimes someone in the slack channel will be like one of the girls from broad city is getting a croissant and we'll all like run out of the building and try to see her so it's nice having other people who are into it i love that that's like always my dream is to run into a celebrity but like literally the only celebrity i think i've ever met in the wild is like george Stromball. <laughs> like, I'm not even going to attempt to say his last name. Who is that? He's like George? a Canadian TV host. <laughs> okay. Is he hot? Um, To me. <laughs> <laughs> That's what matters. And I kind of like it when your celebrity crushes aren't hot. Like I've got the biggest heart on for Conan O'Brien. And I'm oh like, my God. I'm not... <laughs> I don't really have to fight with other girls about this one. So it's nice. Literally. Oh my God. That's so funny. Or like, I really like, he's old. He's in 13 going on 30. I can't remember his oh, name. Oh, the guy who plays the Hulk? Yes. Yes. His name is also escaping me right now, but I know what you're talking about. Yeah. And he looks like a, 
he looks like a hot dad who kind of like wandered onto a film set absolutely i i love yeah. that but why can't i think of his name sometimes that's the one problem is like as soon as i hit record i won't think of like anyone's name but like i could pull it up at the drop of a hat oh my god it's mark ruffalo oh duh <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> I had to look it it's up. It's like so, yeah, it's like so clear. Yeah, okay, on this podcast, it's like a running bit that I just don't look up anything and I just <laughs> don't, I just move on. It <laughs> it's fun too because then I feel like you've also been on the other side of it on a podcast where you'll be driving in the car oh literally God. screaming at someone. I'm yes. like, it's good, it builds rapport. <laughs> yes, literally, literally. Yeah. I know, I, I completely agree. But you talked about your TikTok uh, account, talking about blind items. They're just having mm-hmm. such a moment right now. They really are, aren't they? And part of me is like, oh, am I just thinking that because like that's what I do, so they're in my algorithm. But since I started my account with that, I've noticed other TikTok accounts have popped off with it. And I feel like um, it's really gotten this place in the trending news right now because of Dumois. And if you go on the blind item websites, it's like they are all made in the early 2000s. (laughs) They never updated. They could have made an app by now and really done something. But most of these people who like have blind item information, I feel like are probably now in their like 40s, 50s, 60s. So then when the Dumois Instagram account was created over quarantine, I feel like that kind of gave a resurgence to blind items for like younger folks. Yeah, that's so true. Yeah, I, you're right. Maybe it is just because it's so in my world, but I just feel like everything I see is like celebrity blind items. No, because uh, yeah, and I see it like I'm a huge believer that Taylor Swift and Carly Kloss dated. Same. So I go on the subreddit and it's like Gail or Swift and it's like <laughs> a bunch of people who believe in this theory and it's it's amazing. They're all online detectives. But recently I've been seeing on the post, they'll be like, oh, I read a blind about this or what did the blind say about Selena Gomez? And people are now just kind of using it in everyday language, language, which is, I think it's cool. I don't know if celebrities think it's cool, but I think it's awesome. I feel like celebrities might not think it's cool at this point, but once they've learned how to game the system, like submit their own, if they're not yes. already submitting their own blinds or whatever. Yeah. Just like how they turned paparazzi into like opportunities for staged yes photo photos, shoots and yeah. stuff so once they learn how to game the system I'm sure they'll enjoy them and I think they already are like anytime you see a post on Dumois they are I I don't know I, I think Dumois is a little bit shady with all of the ads and the sponsored content mm-hmm. they do where they try to pretend it's not sponsored anytime somebody writes in saying that they see a celebrity couple and it's you could tell that you know it was paid for they always say walking hand in hand and they seemed like they were so in love And it's like, who says that? I would be like, I saw these people, they were kissing, or I saw them, they looked happy, but it's always, I saw this celebrity couple and they looked so in love. And you'll see that like nine different times in a week. And to me, it's just like, nobody writes like that. No, unless you are like Us Weekly or People. (laughs) Yeah, like that's a copy. That's a headline. It's not a fan sighting, so... Absolutely. I didn't actually really know about blind items before. So I feel like I'm learning so much about like this like underbelly of Hollywood. Obviously, I knew that like the power structures and like there's shady shit going on like my whole life. But well, was it your whole life? Because like when (laughs) was the first moment? Like I remember being a kid and in the grocery store, they would be like, is Beyonce pregnant? And I would look at that magazine cover and be like, oh, my God, I bet she is. You know, like there is that one moment where you kind of start to disbelieve everything. Yeah, that's so true. I feel like for me, a lot of the stuff was like around like covers and shit about like people's bodies that I was like, like, I really, I really do feel like when I was a teen, I was like, this is kind of fucked up. And yeah, and like was kind of like, I don't I don't love this or like pictures of people like just celebs like with no makeup or like crying or something like that. I think for me, it was like if you see a picture and a paparazzo is like shooting up someone's skirt and they'll be like, Britney Spears shows off her underwear. That was when I started to be like, okay, she's definitely not showing off her underwear. Totally. You know, or like Taylor Swift flaunts her body on the beach. And it's like, you took this from behind a boulder. She's not (laughs) flaunting. You're being creepy, you know? Yes, yes. But like, I definitely like, if it was like, like Selena Gomez and Justin Bieber, like wading in the water, I was like pouring over every detail. I know exactly. (laughs) She's wearing the purple strapless (laughs) bikini. Of course, those photos are like burnt. And you're gonna be on a tombstone. Yeah. Literally that fucking bandeau bathing suit and with like hoops. Oh 
oh my god (laughs) and he and the whole time too i'm like how is he supporting her not that she you know (laughs) looks big or anything but i was just like he's actually a nine-year-old child in the ocean with this very beautiful woman yeah yeah yeah. i think that was the first time too i was like is justin even like too young for me (laughs) he does really look like his body looks like a child (laughs) Ah, those oh, photos oh my god I memorized them yeah, yeah same oh my god it was always <laughs> such a treat like I definitely growing up like entertainment tonight like ET Canada and like all that yeah. shit was on at 7 p.m so we my family would like eat dinner and then watch those shows and when we would go on road trips on like the one time we took a flight when I was like 13 we would get all the magazines from the store and it was like yes. such a treat to just like read all of those magazines that's like why I like getting my nails done because I can <laughs> flip through a trashy magazine yeah oh my god I should start going to salons that still I don't think they have magazines at the places the, well, I this go. is actually a hack like all magazines are going out of business now I bought a year subscription of Cosmo for three dollars and you can get like a year subscription of magazine for about five dollars because they're all going out of business wild FYI. they used to I yeah. remember it was like five dollars a magazine and yeah yeah you would treat it like gold you would send it to like like my grandma and then my aunt would get it and like you would just pass yep. it around to your whole yeah family. it would be like May and you're reading an issue from January <laughs> yeah. you're like oh this is this is good stuff <laughs> yeah yeah I remember when things weren't like immediate like yes <laughs> fuck I um, definitely think that the kind of blind items that I would read before I saw like Dumois and then like all these TikTok accounts, etc. was just like reality Steve spoiling. I don't even know if that's the best. Yeah, technically yeah. a blind item. But I think that's like as like much like that's all I really knew about this world until like maybe about a year ago yeah and well it's also interesting too because even with the tabloids at beyond the blinds on my podcast and i think troy was the one who mentioned this where he was saying you know we sometimes you look at a blind item and you're like oh it's not true it must be fake But when you read these actual magazines, Star Magazine or Us or People, whenever they're telling a story about like Kim Kardashian's breakup, they always say a source close to Kim says blah, blah, blah. And it's like, you think it's legit because it's in a magazine, but you don't know who that source is. So even in magazines, we've been reading blind items our entire life because who are these sources close to the celebrity and who's the friend of the celebrity, you know? Literally. Like now I look back on it and I'm like, what was that just somebody a co- was that like an intern and then they just put source in front of it or do they actually have people who rat out their friends yeah like it's just Jonathan Chabon the whole time yes. like- <laughs> it's just food god telling yeah. everything yeah oh my god yeah that's a really good point and like I guess the essence is still the same where like someone submitting a story and you have no way to prove it other than like it coming up a bunch or then you- or like the actual celebrity revealing it like later on in their careers. So I find myself like I have gone down such a rabbit hole. I find I believe so much more crazy shit. Yes. (laughs) Well, because because crazy shit happens. And like I'm also a conspiracy theorist, but (laughs) some of these blind items, right? Like I do take them with a grain of salt. And like a lot of these ones, I'm like, okay, like I don't think everyone's gay and I don't think everyone is selling their body for money and stuff like that. But then you do hear about the Jeffrey Epstein's, the Harvey Weinstein's, the Bill Cosby, the Ellen's of the world. And you're like, if somebody told me that dancing Ellen giving everybody a pool in their backyard was actually like this hardened person in Hollywood that a lot of people don't get along with, I would have thought that you were crazy. But, you know, every year something shocking does come out like Army Hammer eating people and wanting to be a cannibal like if you read that as a blind item you would be like shut the site down somebody submitted that but then it comes out as true so it's like you know you do have to keep an open mind that's so true oh my god that's like a good way of looking at it because I was thinking I'm like have I gone too far off the deep end Yeah, but that's the thing. Maybe you haven't. Like people get so mad too. They're like, there's no way like this would be a PR or like this person. People get really mad when I speculate on people's sexuality. Mm -hmm. But just in the past year alone, we've had three different celebrities come out with memoirs where they said that they were gay and 
they've been dating someone for eight years, 10 years, 19 years. So it's like, you know, these things do happen. I listened to your Taylor and Carly episode. Oh, Carly, yeah. Because obviously I'm on Gaylor TikTok as well. Not Tumblr, but I, I feel like I'll be there someday. <laughs> yeah. Because we were talking about how they had allegedly been in a relationship for like seven years. Like mm-hmm. that's wild to me. Yeah. But also super believable at the same time. Yeah. Yeah. Yes, exactly. And it's funny how with some celebrities, it's very accepted. And with others, it isn't like I made a TikTok video on um, couples that I think are PR. Mm-hmm. And in the video, I said that I think Sean and Camilla are PR or were PR, rest in peace. Yes. <laughs> and um, so many people were like, absolutely not. No way. But then I did one about Bill and Hillary Clinton. And they were like, Oh yeah, a hundred percent their PR. Like they haven't, you know, they they haven't talked to each other in twenty years. And I'm like, okay, but how are you gonna believe that Sean and Camilla aren't when they just dated for a little bit? You know, Bill and Hillary have a child together, they've been married, but it's easy for you to write that one off. So I feel like people just let their kind of own opinion, you know, make up their mind sometimes, which, you know, that's fine. Yeah, that's a really good point. I think that Obviously, I've always known, again, always a relative term, but like I've known that PR relationships exist, but I don't think, do you cover The Bachelor? I'm actually tomorrow, I'm going to do a podcast with the folks from She's All Batch. So literally an hour ago, I pulled a bunch of lines on Bachelor folks and my God, they're messy. Yes. So messy. Okay. So excited for that. I basically um, haven't watched the TV show in like five years, but I follow all of the the, like influencers. It's one of those shows where like you don't even need to watch the TV show. You just hear about it like at work or you know through magazines. Like you just know what's happening. Absolutely, just all of the time. Like I can have a full conversation with someone and they'll have <laughs> no idea that I have not seen the TV show, um, which is kind of tragic. But I think like the PR relationships were what really opened my eyes to start thinking about other people's relationships like Taylor and Harry yeah etc is Mm -hmm. people from The Bachelor because like basically 99% of their relationships are like absolute farces and like everyone knows that it's like just like an accepted like thought that everyone has and when I'm like when they get engaged after like six weeks or whatever and then they date for a year year and then break up like that's they they always break up because of like busy schedules and it's like anytime you hear someone say busy schedule to me I'm like okay PR relationship ending absolutely okay which we should get into Sean and Camilla because yes they said busy schedules yes (laughs) as they're like (laughs) like that is just okay like I could say that as like a pleb who doesn't have access to like planes and my own work schedule and like shit like that but for celebrities it's like fuck you that like does not matter at all also especially during covid i'm like really camilla like what are you doing (laughs) press for the cinderella movie like i don't think either of you are that busy right now maybe timothy chalamet because he's in like every single movie that's come out the past two years but like i don't think any celebrity is really having the busiest year of their life right now literally oh my god that's so funny so we're gonna talk about two celeb relationships today, Sean and Camilla, and then Tristan and Chloe. Which I feel like every single time I talk about Tristan and Chloe, I'm like, this is the last time like I give them <laughs> airtime on this godforsaken podcast. And then next episode, I'm like, I'm back. <laughs> like, yeah, they're 100%. back. So let's start with Sean and Camilla. We both believe that they are in a PR relationship. Just want to lay that ground. Like, I don't know if that's going to get, like, heat. I don't know if that's, like, a hot take. I feel like most people agree with that one. Like, there's some people where I feel like Sean and Camilla, Nick and Priyanka, Pete and Kim, I feel like those are ones that people are like, okay, I'm open to it maybe being fake. Side note, I feel like we're never going to get through this. (laughs) Side note, I was, like, shocked that they allowed on the Jonas Family roast – a the bearded beard joke. joke. Yeah, because you know all of those jokes were definitely pre-approved and yes, signed off. It was yes. like such like a shiny roast to have. Yes, um, yeah. Yeah, although I found myself really liking Priyanka during that, which is funny because I've seen her in interviews and I'm like, uh, just like so try hard. I did not mesh with her at all. And I came away from that roast being like, you know what? 
I hate Nick Jonas. I hate him. I think I hate him. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. This is a not a pro Nick podcast. Yeah. For sure. <laughs> for sure. Yeah, I don't I don't think I came away liking her, but she's just so beautiful. She is that you just like so beautiful. I don't hold anything against her. And I her. feel like I like I want to have a party and I want to get into a drinking game with Sophie Turner. Oh and I want God. Danielle to do the cooking, but I want Priyanka <laughs> to be the one who like opens the door and makes everyone mingle. Like, I feel like she has a gift as a socialite or a charmer or things like that. But I also found her joke interesting where she was like, I taught Nick how to have a successful acting career. And I was like, okay, but like where? Yeah. Like, <laughs> yeah. What have you been in lately, you know? Yeah. Although I was saying that and people are like, she's in a lot of different Bollywood films. And I'm like, oh, right. That's like an entire industry. I, I don't really know anything about. Yeah, that's a good point. Because yeah, it's like I didn't see that like Valentine's Day movie she was in. <laughs> like, yeah, yeah. And that's like literally the last credit I can think of that she has. So Sean and Camilla were together for two years. Do you think that's normal for a PR? Like I was like, oh, okay, like they'll be together for six months promote their songs and then break up yes I mean I think that COVID kind of lengthened it for Mm. them and they really milked COVID for like all they could have with all their like paparazzi walks uh you know neighborhood morning strolls and things like that my thought on the two of them you know I think Shawn Mendes is gay along with I feel like 98 percent of like the population here on earth and I think that Camilla at the very least is bi I know that some people I've watched like some you know videos on YouTube of people saying that her and Lauren I think from Fifth Harmony could have had something Mm. I don't know but I think that they were both just like look we're getting started in our career this will help it at the very least like we're really good friends and we get on well why not just pair up because we can live with each other we like each other a lot we're friendly this will boost both both of us and then we'll go our separate ways afterwards which honestly I think it's the smart move. Like if I was in Hollywood, I would do that too. And I think it did help them. I think it went on. I think they were a little bit too cringe. Like it helped (laughs) boost them in popularity, but I think it kind of took them out of favor with people in terms of like sincerely being a fan. But I think it did what it was supposed to do. I'm excited for each of them to like go their separate ways now. Yeah, it's totally the right time. Yes. Again, you're right. Like when their songs I Know What You Did Last Summer and Senorita came out and they were doing like tons of press and like almost kissing on stage I feel like mm-hmm. that was like the boom like I was so invested and wait then- <laughs> speaking of songs where yes. somebody almost kisses on stage yeah. do you remember when they were trying to make Megan Trainer and Charlie Puth a thing oh my yes yes <laughs> but they oh actually god. did make out on yes. stage and it was like rancid and everyone was like no oh my god ew never do that again and then they like stopped pretending to be a couple after that (laughs) yeah and then she like ended up with the guy from like spy kids and like yeah some disney yes and like it's really cute but oh god that was that is also (laughs) etched in my memory of like i wish i could fucking forget oh my god I, <laughs> i'm gonna look it up after this even though it's gonna make me want to die it's just like it's so funny <laughs> it's so bad it's so bad i feel like she was having a little bit of rocky press with just like the falling out from fifth harmony well, and, and also her racist tumblr posts Yes. Oh, good. That's yeah. such a good point. A lot of people forget about that, but that was like really taking off and then people forgot about it. Yeah. So interesting. Yeah. Probably because she's with like a super sweet Canadian boy. Yeah, exactly. Interesting. Yeah. I just think that, yeah, it went out, went on for so long that people started like, remember their again, making out video that they posted on oh Instagram. My God, I, it was, it was, it actually made, I feel I feel like celibacy must have been trending on Google that day because I almost considered it. I was just like, this is disgusting. I never want to do this with another person for the rest of my life. Literally, people are going to think all we do is sit and watch videos of people making out. <laughs> Like we just mentioned like I mean, five in like 30 that, that was what I did in middle school. <laughs> yeah. um, and sometimes it still happens. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> yeah, I think that so it helped their relationship. But then like I think it is at least for me, I like got so sick of them that like yeah. you mentioned the walks. They were wearing clothes like they're wearing like what I'm currently wearing. Just like a hodgepodge yeah. of like random shit that you found on your bedroom floor. And sometimes with celebrities, I'm kind of like, how dare you? <laughs> like. 
Yes. <laughs> yes. Like put on a matching sweatsuit and <laughs> while you go. Yeah, for a wear walk. one of those like washable silk pajama sets that cost like six hundred dollars a top or something. Literally, literally, that pissed me off so much. I kind of just think they had like a spike and then it really like plateaued. I just I really don't care about them. That's why it's like a month later and I'm just starting to talk about their breakup. <laughs> like- yes. And I think Sean, this is also how you know it's PR. Sean Mendes put out some song afterwards mm. that was all about like it was basically the nicest breakup song ever being like I wish you it was basically the phrase I wish you well in song form and it was like oh wow you just had that ready to go oh you broke up and I guess you made that song in 36 hours it's like come on this whole thing was planned literally so they announced their breakup November 17th and then it'll be okay came out December 1st Mm -hmm. yeah lyrics are about like leaving like a loveless not loveless relationship but just like a more friendship type of relationship yeah I just feel like it was so much more exciting when he was dating like Hailey Bieber and yes yes I want him and Harry Styles to like have a little fling that would be so fun I feel like Sean's like the way that he dresses is very Harry Styles in like I don't know what year maybe like 2017 or something like yeah really skinny jeans Chelsea boots like Chelsea boots from Converse, <laughs> Converse to Chelsea boots, yeah. Like literally, um, yeah. I'm, I, I'm just excited. But here's the thing: I think Sean Mendes needs a reinvention of his look. I think he's needed one for a long time, and I think now is the time where it could, you know, hopefully happen. And I want Camilla to redo her look too. I was gonna do a TikTok video on this this week but I do not like the long hair on her I have seen videos of her with like short hair and like a bob with kind of like a French Paris fringe on top and I want her to like I feel like she has good pop songs Mm -hmm. she can dance on stage Mm -hmm. I want her to be like a sexy little you know pop star for the next couple of years and see how that happens because I just don't like the whole I don't know like stop being relatable don't you just (laughs) hate it when celebrities stay in the relatable lane for too long I completely agree. Do you have someone in mind for Camilla to date next, like for real or for PR again? I want her to be on the arm of like a rich older businessman, which according to the blinds, it kind of sounds like that's where she is already. Allegedly, she is really, really big into coke and she's always kind of sleeping around to try and get gigs basically the blinds are like you know the me too movement happened but like it hasn't really changed anything in hollywood so i think that also is why she isn't really as tight with taylor swift anymore because she would be getting she would be partying too hard and then there would be a couple nights on the reputation tour where like she couldn't perform because she was sick which like we all know that means like hungover or dealing with drugs so i don't know i just want her to be with like some hot older kind of mystery man I like that I feel like that's done a lot of people well like to choose someone who's like super rich but not actually famous yes yeah but I feel like also a lot of singers like that worked well for Ariana Grande but I feel like also singers need maybe someone in the public eye for people to be like really interested in their music (laughs) Yeah, because like once you're big enough, right, like Rihanna was dating some hot, rich Middle Eastern guy who nobody knew about. And that was fine. Mm. Ariana's husband, fine. Taylor Swift with Joe Alwyn, fine. It's because they're big enough. But you're right. I think if Camilla dated someone outside of the public domain, people would be like, okay, she was easy to forget. Mm -hmm. You know, Mm -hmm. do you think that celebs that are gay or bi or whatever are where there's a lot of speculation about their sexuality do you think that they are not saying anything because that gets them more press than just being out I think a lot of it comes down to record deals and uh, like it depends which type of celebrity you are right so like let's say you are an actor if you're a gay actor you're going to want to stay closeted because if you come out it's going to be a lot harder to cast you in the next marvel movie right. as some like hunky man who's going to save the day which is like you know it's messed up yeah. but i feel like that's how people think and then when it comes to singers if sean mendez comes out then all of his 14 year old fans who are in love with him might not buy the next album and things like that so 
I think a lot of people, when I talk about stuff like this, they're like, well, if they're closeted, of course they would come out. It's 2021. Mm -hmm. And I think, well, first of all, it's more of a business decision than it is like a value, I I don't know, like emotional yeah, yeah, values. And then also I think too, um, you know, we forget that celebrities have families and to us, we might say, oh, you know, millions of us on Twitter would accept you. But when that celebrity goes home for Thanksgiving, is their uncle going to be giving them the stink eye? You know, like there's, there's a lot that goes into coming out, I think. Yeah, absolutely. And like, I, again, I feel like it's like, well, you're the celebrity in the family, like they'll want to accept you. But I'm like, that's not how actually people think about themselves I don't think yeah I don't think so at all but it's interesting you know like I don't know my hope is that Taylor Swift comes out while she's still alive (laughs) and we get to hear about the thought process and like watch a documentary on it and stuff like that yeah 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 it's interesting I hear a lot of discourse about that on TikTok too about talking about celebs or like gossiping about celebs sexuality but I think you've made some great points on your TikToks and on your podcast about people that like Taylor Swift in particular that leave these breadcrumbs yes like unless you're deranged nobody looks you know like I'm not gonna look at Michelle Obama and be like I think she's actually a lesbian you know what I mean like people come to these theories not because they have malice in their heart or they're like trying to be evil but it's because you know there's clues that led them there otherwise they wouldn't think it yeah also am I crazy I'm like I don't think speculation is wrong I think about whether or not people are gay or horny or you know have a good family life like I, I, in my head, speculate on people all the time. I think we're in a weird time where people are like, that's dangerous. And I'm like, I don't like having a gun is dangerous, <laughs> but in your head thinking about whether or not Kanye could be gay. Like, I don't really think that's dangerous. Yeah, totally. Cause you were also talking on your podcast about like how when street Swiss, when street Swifties, that is a mouthful mm-hmm. are like adamantly defending her like straightness it, it yeah like how dare you say yeah, she's gay like, like it what? comes off as homophobic <laughs> like, like, yes. like maybe reflect on that for a second taylor's not the type of person to be gay i'm like what type of person a bad one yeah, <laughs> yeah absolutely also it's hollywood i feel like everyone in hollywood is basically pansexual because everyone's so hot how could you not be <laughs> like i go to the met gala and i'm like i would doink 95% of everyone here. Okay, you like attend or you're like in the audience or you are watching? Oh, no, like, <laughs> when I watch it, I'm just okay. like, yes, yes, yeah. yes. Like nobody gets the no. Everyone's so attractive. Yeah, yeah. I totally yeah. get that. Wait, can I ask who is your celeb crush? Well, we talked about just other than <laughs> other than Mark is Mark Ruffalo the number one? <laughs> who is my number one crush? Okay, it like definitely it I feel like I go in phases. Totally. Yeah. Like my all of my friends always have been teasing me about Pete Davidson for the last like six months. But I'm like, I feel like he's just like ever present in the media. Yeah, he's there. Yeah. And I feel like he's <laughs> Especially recently, just always talked about in a positive light. I think that's another thing I've noticed about, well, obviously just with celebs and with like the leads of uh, The Bachelor and Bachelorette, etc. I feel like just yeah. when people talk about people in such a positive light, you like end up liking them, obviously. <laughs> like- yeah. And you know what? I just had this thought about Pete Davidson. I think everyone likes him because he doesn't take himself seriously. Mm-hmm. But he's, he, so he doesn't take himself seriously, but he never tries to be relatable. Whereas people like Camilla Cabello, like they annoy us because they try to be relatable, but they also take themselves so seriously. You know what I mean? But Pete Davidson is like, yeah, I'm famous. Yeah, I dated Ariana Grande. I'm hanging out with the Kardashians, but I'm just going to talk about things normally rather than being like, let me give you this theatrical monologue about how I ate Hawaiian pizza. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? He kind of flips mm-hmm. the script. Absolutely. And I feel like a lot of people are having like a lot of celeb crushes that are mainstream, like Jack Harlow and Pete Davidson and stuff like that like I just feel like when you think you could get with the person like when it's like more realistic I feel like that's like the type of celebrity crush that is like just prominent now versus like 
the Brad Pitts and like the old school like like George Clooney is walking by me and not looking the other way but like maybe yes. Jack Harlow is I don't know I like don't yeah. like him I don't but he's the the person that I think about as well as like Pete Davidson You're right because like we went from the superhero the Brad Pitt then we kind of went to like the non-binary man so like mm-hmm. the Timothy Chalamet the Harry Styles, Styles where like they look a little bit feminine but masculine and now it's like the class clown in your high school that somehow grew up and got famous and it's like ooh, <laughs> absolutely oh, that's so true that's a really good reference or like a uh, analogy I feel like someone needs to do research on this <laughs> like, yeah we have to find out who the next trending person is like is it going to be the baldies is it going to be the <laughs> short kings and then we can like hop on it <laughs> And I feel like maybe the the other contributor to this is just like with casual YouTube interviews, like hot ones and with TikTok and all of these things, just the the people that come off really well are the people like Pete Davidson that like seems like he can hang versus someone that's like super buttoned up. It's almost like people like their celebrities, like they like their politicians now, you know, like, could I grab a beer with him? Okay, then I guess I'll stand. Yeah, yeah absolutely. <laughs> Oh my god, I'm gonna get ripped apart for the Pete Davidson thing. Who is your your current uh, celeb crush? You know what? Like, I do love Conan O'Brien, but oddly enough, like, it is really hard for me to crush on celebs now because after getting so invested in the blind items, I'm like, I'm such a overthinker that the minute I have a celeb crush, I'm like, okay, it's not a crush. I'm now imagining our life together. How is it? And then I'm like, oh, they're going to cheat on me and then go do cocaine. Yeah. <laughs> so, literally, literally. But okay. And why is that me too? Because like Justin Bieber was my like very long time crush. But then it was yeah. like when his involvement in Hillsong and like his years of like doing fucking dumb shit and saying dumb shit. Wait, and do stuff. you remember when he peed in a mop yeah, bucket while shouting that's... fuck you Bill Clinton? That's oh, literally honestly, what like, I was thinking. That's kind of iconic though. <laughs> I know because okay, I, at first I was kind of like those were like the guys that I would probably be into in like high school. <laughs> like, Dude, a hundred percent. I would be staring, I would be like in my honors classroom staring out the window yes, at them doing yes. that, being like, I hope they look in here at me. <laughs> Literally, because I was like, I feel like the buttoned up girl. I'm like, oh my God. Man, we just like went down, I feel like not therapy, but like a psychoanalysis. Oh, a hundred percent. So fucking true. But yeah, I read into that as well. Like, yeah, just with everything that's come out about celebs and stuff, I'm like, do I actually even like anybody or like, do I trust anyone? Yeah. And it's crazy to me too, because I never hate anyone enough to like really cancel them unless they're involved with like children or anything, you know, Epstein related like that. But to me, because sometimes people are like, oh, you're trying to cancel someone. I'm like, actually, I just kind of want to sit back and enjoy the ride, Mm -hmm. you know, like, First of all, even if I wanted to cancel someone, I don't know. I don't think I can make it happen. Yeah. So, you know, nothing's happened to Jeffrey Epstein. So, like, good luck. Literally. But I I don't know. I find it fun. Like, it's just fun to watch people be messy and hashtag petty. Yes. Yeah. And, like, I really think, again, not to bring this, like, deeper than it needs to be, but, like, who else is going to hold people accountable? And like, I don't know, maybe sometimes it'll happen. But I feel like, especially in my work, outside of the podcast and stuff like that, I'm like, if no one's saying anything, like that's how these bad things continue to happen. Yes. And how much did it steam you when everyone was like, oh yeah, we all knew about Harvey Weinstein. I'm like, maybe do something. Literally, (laughs) literally. And obviously I know that there's so many factors that play into, you know, doing something about uh, when you see something wrong and you need to tell yeah. someone and stuff like that there's so many factors that play into it but it was like way too many people saying that type of shit that I was like I don't know yeah. um, because ugh, we don't have to get into it but it's like there are, you you also are famous like you do hold certain status yes. and stuff I don't know it's all that's what I think too or like when I don't know there were so many actresses who were like yeah, I heard rumors about him. So like I told my friends never to work with him. And then I'm like, you should have been telling everyone at that party. I mean, I'm sure then you're nervous because you get blacklisted. But it's just um, to me, I just think like when Ricky Gervais was 
crushing into everyone at the Oscars and making jokes about Me Too and Harvey Weinstein and everyone was uncomfortable. I'm like, shame on you because if, you know, all 10,000 of you sitting here at the Oscars are uncomfortable, I'm pretty sure 10,000 of you could have gone up against one man because it seems like every single person in the seat knew. And at that point, you know, like, it's just crazy to me. Everyone knew. Like you mentioned at the top of the episode, if we keep hearing about these single individuals, like how many more are there that we just haven't heard about yet? So it's fascinating. I wish there was just a, it would be a huge buck of just like a historical, like I just, like you said, um, you hope Taylor Swift comes out before she passes away. I hope that before (laughs) I pass away, I like hear all of the insider scoop from from all these celebs. Yeah, it's a good, the next time I take my multivitamin, I'm like, (laughs) this is to stay a longer, so that way I can see Shawn Mendes come out. Oh my god, that's so funny. Maybe that's how this is my exercise, I was just yeah. gonna say, maybe this will like get me to the gym. <laughs> Gotta keep my heart healthy because I want Taylor Swift to talk about her sexuality. <laughs> Literally. Oh my god, or like have a chance with Pete Davidson. <laughs> like, yes. Oh my god, dead. Uh, okay, the other couple we wanted to talk about, Tristan and Chloe. Again, I just like, I I feel like I don't want to talk about these <laughs> two so badly, but I like have to because it's just so insane to me that this has happened again. I find, and I think it was Beyond the Blinds on their episode about Chloe, they were saying, I think Tristan hates her because it's just so many people in Hollywood cheat, but to be this public about it with like multiple different women and um I I mean I think he has a sex addiction I really do I remember it was a couple years ago when I found out that getting a vasectomy first of all it can be reversed which it seems like he wouldn't want it to be reversed because he does not seem like he likes his children including the future children (laughs) but also it's like to me I just find it insane that any like athlete or rapper or you know anyone who's like known to cheat on their spouses basically in Hollywood, why would you not get a vasectomy? Like there should be no reason why you're having illegitimate children, especially this many times. Just to recap, if people haven't heard about this, also she is given birth. So the baby is here, but Tristan got another woman pregnant. She is like a personal trainer, lived in Texas, moved to California She's been pregnant since March, had the baby in early December. This is the third time, again, if you live under a rock, third time this has happened, um, Tristan got a model pregnant as he was like dating Chloe and then got Chloe pregnant and then Chloe and Tristan reconciled and then he got this woman pregnant. So And there was uh, the Jordan Woods situation too. oh my god which yeah. he absolutely does hate chloe but it's just interesting because <laughs> i feel like he is just really bold to do this against like the kardashian family yeah exactly i feel like if there's one group of people that i do not want to go up against in hollywood it would be the kardashians like they have taken down every single person who has wronged them and you know, to quote that TikTok sound that's going viral, their money is long, mm-hmm. you know, like they're just, I don't know. Although I'm looking at pictures of Tristan Thompson now, cause I was about to be like, is he even good looking enough for this? And I'm like, okay, he is like yeah. really good looking. <laughs> I also was really surprised when I also was confirming if he was hot <laughs> because, yes. because he was so, he was on season 20, like they were heavily featured, Chloe and Tristan on the last season of Keeping Up. Like, they went fucking, like, ghost hunting, which is, mm. again, such a fucking farce. It's it's actually so embarrassing <laughs> that we, like... I just hate when there's TV that it's just, like, the producers think we're so dumb to think that yes. an ounce of this is real. But yeah. he was so annoying on that um, season that I just, like, completely blurred his picture out of my mind. But when I looked him up, I forgot he's really young. I think he's 27. Ooh. Ooh, okay. I mean, 27. Oh, no, he's 30. He's 30, oh, but still okay. young. It's, it's still young, um, like, for, I don't know. Especially to, to be the dad of that many children. Yes, yes. Ugh, I just, speaking of busy schedules, <laughs> not that he's, know, he, would, yeah, he can. He would actually have a reason to break up. But I also, I'm just so curious what happens 
behind the scenes because I feel like at the beginning everybody was like Chloe keeps going back to him because she's so in love and she's so naive and at this point I'm like do they have a very contractual relationship or is she still kind of pining after him kind of you know how dumb is Chloe (laughs) well I thought that like I thought that they probably both have a contractual uh, relationship as well as she's obsessed with him but then I realized that I don't think that's it at all because he wouldn't he couldn't continue to do this if they had a contractual relationship like I feel like he they could have been like okay you can hook up with whoever you want but like you can't get people pregnant like that's absurd but I think that what it comes down to that I think we forget because they're so open about like sexuality and they have like gay friends and stuff like that I think we really forget that the Kardashians are like extremely rooted in Christianity question mark yes yes and just like like they go to church often Chris has a fucking church like they really believe I think in like the the family values and the family system and like stuff like that and I think that they just try so hard to push like a relationships with the men that they have kids with until yeah. like they absolutely cannot and I feel like Scott was the one who was like I'm gonna test just how much I can stick around for you know and then after his like 200th toxic move but have, have the Kardashians been with any men that were great I mean we have Scott Disick we have Kanye West Travis Scott Tristan like I just feel like is there um, bad stuff about Travis Scott well everything with um Astroworld Oh my gosh. Oh my God. This is so bad. I was thinking about <laughs> Travis Barker in my head. <laughs> oh, no, They're both no, no, named no. Travis. Yeah. I think, I think there's nothing bad about him. Just that like, he's got a little bit of trauma from like his previous life right, um, right. and nothing like that. But yeah, I feel like the Kardashians, you know, they kind of link up with someone who's really popular of the moment, but not like, you know, cut from the finest, most virtuous cloth. That's a really good point. Yeah, they they do seem, and I know that I there's an account I follow on TikTok, Kardashian Colloquium. Yes, yeah, yes. she's fantastic. Amazing. And I feel like she talks about this a lot about the guys that they choose and why. But I think also the other piece of it is that when they're in scandal, I think they again root into like Christian family values, like with the Kylie Jenner article coming out. Basically, if people haven't heard about that, there was a W Magazine article basically saying that Travis and Kylie were in some version of like an open relationship or they're like co-parenting, but they're not like romantically together or something like that. It was this yeah. whole thing with about the modern family. And then they like immediately kill that as soon as Astroworld happens and I think when they see tragedy or scandal in their lives they like really double down on like we're like a Christian family at the end of it yeah and then also like what they do when a scandal happens is they use all the tentacles of the octopus right so like something happens with Kendall and Kylie being at Astroworld and they go okay, Kendall, you wear the provocative dress to your friend's wedding. And Kim, you're going to be out with Pete Davidson holding hands and um, visiting his place in Staten Island. And Chloe, good thing we got Tristan on a scandal. Yeah. You know, go, 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 go. Yes, um, yes. And honestly, like, it's a good method. Absolutely. Like, that is why, again, they've weathered all of these storms. So yeah. that was a question that I had for you. Do you think that this story only broke, like, this week because – they're still not like kind of getting released from the astro world tragedy yeah. it's hard to and i also like to be honest i don't really think the kardashians are that involved in what happened to astro world i mean first of all technically it was the jenners yeah <laughs> not yes, the kardashians yes. um but i could see that you know people are always quick to link them to a scandal because i feel like you know we're always excited for the downfall of the kardashians Mm -hmm. i think that for the kardashians it really is all press is good press even when chloe had that photoshopping scandal right or not photoshopping yeah the picture of her that wasn't photoshopped that mj put up they could have made that 
into something very small. Like they know how to minimize things. There's a reason why it's so hard to find certain parts of Kim Kardashian's sex tape or truly unflattering things about the family, but they blew that into up into a big deal, even though it was bad news. And I feel like that's what they'll do with typical scandals, but they knew Astroworld was too much of bad news to use in their favor. So instead, I think the Tristan situation, I don't think it could have, I don't think it had to be this big. Also the girl, the baby mama, she was posting these Instagram stories about everything happening, but then it turned out that that account was fake mm-hmm. and it wasn't actually hers. Mm-hmm. And part of me is like, okay, is the Kardashians behind that? Because that was what got a lot of people talking. Oh my God. That's so true. Um, because Mara Lee, I think, I believe that's her name. Mara Lee Nichols. Yeah. I felt like the news broke. There was like a little blip and then it kind of died mm-hmm. down for a day. And then Tristan's Snapchat conversations. I was like, oh my God, is this fucking 2012? (laughs) Like, yeah, I know. Like, it's bad enough to get someone pregnant, but to be snapping them, (laughs) it's like, that's unforgivable. Absolutely. Oh my God. So, like, there's Snapchat combos released of him being like, take $75,000 and don't tell anybody. I am mm-hmm. want zero involvement with this child, which is like, great. The child's now going to see that online in 10 years. And then yeah. so there was like a little blip with that. And then I felt like for two days there was nothing. And then all of a sudden this fake Instagram account like blew up mm-hmm. claiming that Kylie had sex with Drake, which I kind of still believe. <laughs> but I could see that happening and to me the biggest sign of it is that Drake is like very weird with younger teenage. yes yeah. younger women yeah I, I should no girls I should say yeah I mean well it's hard when they're just about to turn 18 which is when he gets in on them but yeah he was texting Kylie when she was 17 and people thought it was weird yeah so that's really interesting that I didn't even think about this is why you have your very successful TikTok <laughs> account because you're like that's the Kardashians behind it and I'm like always late to the ball game. <laughs> like, I'm just like a nut job conspiracy theorist. So, you know, every conspiracy theorist gets it right at least once. <laughs> yeah. That's what I feel like. Like, I feel so absolute. Like, I feel gaslit all of the fucking time with yes. this shit. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, my goodness. Uh, so that's really interesting that you think that. But I could totally see that. It just lights so many more flames. Like, people were really referencing Drake lyrics that said, like, you used to do skincare and now you do swim where who is I guess it's Chris Jenner but like who is the marketing fucking genius behind this lots of blind items have said that Drake and Kylie have slept together and also that he slept with Kim wild so it's yeah. weird how many blind items have come out about the Kardashian sisters sleeping with the same guy the same person yeah they like pass him around like he is a turkey ham on Christmas <laughs> or something <laughs> it's like if, if at least two sisters haven't slept with you, it's like your time here is not done yet. <laughs> Literally. So do you think that gives any validity to like the Scott and like Chloe or et cetera rumors? No, there have been so many blinds about the two of them. I don't know. They have an interesting friendship, you know, definitely more so than any of the other sisters do. But I feel like with Scott, it would be different because like he's he's a father of the children and I feel like that would make someone untouchable rather than just like a hookup I think like you kind of mentioned this that everyone is praying for their downfall do you think like that this is a slow decline of the Kardashians I feel like they've taken just one hit after another this fall yeah I don't I mean they are like a chameleon they are always able to adapt and overcome and I think I don't know if this is like, it would be really dark if they had been like meticulous about this, but the way that like the Jenners exist for kind of like the younger generations, you know, when the Kardashians kind of get out of the spotlight, you're going to have the Jenners to fill it. And then before long, you're going to have the next, you know, the Penelope's and the North's and the True's to take over. So I just kind of feel like we might be seeing them for a long time. Yeah, that's so true. Yeah, I there isn't a scandal I don't think they can not get out from. But I just, I really feel like the past two years, at least maybe it's like my opinion of them has really soured. So maybe I just see that. But like all of their like COVID shit and then Astro World and stuff. I'm like, they just really are, I think, kind of rotted to the core. And I just, or like them just like denying 
any influence that they have over the beauty standards, all of the BBL yes. shit. Like I just, I really have soured on them in the last two years. Yeah. I, I think what will happen, which I think happens with any celebrity is they're, however rotted they are, you have to look at it in proportion to the value of entertainment they provide. So I feel like that's some people, you know, like Aziz Ansari got canceled, but like he wasn't really known for stand up. So, okay, you could squash him, but Louis C.K. got canceled. Well, he's one of the biggest stand ups. So he's back and he's touring now. You know, if one person gets canceled and they don't really like, let's say Camila Cabello right now got canceled again, like let's say more racist things about her past come out and there's no Shawn Mendes to save her people it would be very easy to cancel her yeah but if Ariana Grande comes out with something like that people are quicker to forgive so I think it just depends like this new Hulu show is it fantastic and it hooks us and we like them again or is it just trash and then it makes them that much easier to cancel next year yeah that's a really good point point. and like I see myself doing that too like with Scott Disick I think I was like fucking defending him two episodes ago yeah and he's a piece yeah. of shit <laughs> like yeah and like like Scott Disick back when he was on the show being like Lord Disick mm-hmm. and being really funny I'm like yeah he's toxic but like whatever mm-hmm. he's fun mm-hmm. and now he's dating all of these 17 18 year old girls and he isn't really contributing anything comedically to the show mm-hmm. or anything entertaining so I'm like yeah you know what we hate Scott Disick now yeah that's so true we don't get it <laughs> and it's not him. right but yeah, yeah. Oh, that's so fascinating. Where do you see Chloe and Tristan going to next? Just like it seems like people were saying that they had already split this summer. So she yeah. was pregnant when they were still together, but they had already split up. Do you just see them again co parenting? I mean, we know they're definitely not like cooking risotto together <laughs> on a Tuesday night, you know, like they're so far from that. I think maybe. With Kylie and Travis, maybe they're rolling out this idea of like co-parenting. And if it is kind of accepted by people, they will put Tristan on that track. You know, not to say like if Chloe only wants two children, she could get rid of him because we saw Courtney do that. And now she's with Travis. So I think it's either co-parenting or fully getting rid of him. What do you think? I really now at this point have it have a hard time believing because I also agreed that they were on like the literally the Scott Disick and the Travis Scott train where it's like they'll have another baby together but they'll like kind of co-parent and again probably have a will they won't they storyline in the press etc but now I'm just having such a hard time believing that that will actually happen and I think Beyond the Blinds talked about this in their Chloe episode. They talked about just how the narrative around her is like, poor, like kind of poor me. Yeah. So yeah. I just feel like she doesn't even want them to have like a good co parenting relationship. Like maybe she'll just like cut him out or something. I have no idea. Yeah. She definitely feeds into the victim mindset a lot for herself, which is so sad because when you hear her give advice to other people and just speak on really anything else, I find her really engaging and honestly, like really with it, but it just seems like she never takes her own advice. I know, but I wonder if that is again, more just what we're seeing and not because that was always the like intrigue about her is that she seemed like the cool one that everyone wanted to hang with but then we're just like oh she just can't get it together or take her own advice I'm like maybe she just is again that's just all we see of her yeah so interesting well we'll we'll stay tuned I'm sure they'll have something else for us sadly (laughs) you don't want to hear it but I don't think this will be the last time Tristan Grace is ready to be I know literally (laughs) I'm like oh you'll be back I know I need to like make a playlist of just all of my episodes covering (laughs) Tristan and Chloe or something like that. The Tristan top 40. Oh my god. So we're gonna wrap up with a This Week in Petty story. What has been going on in your life that you want to bitch about? (laughs) I want I want to bitch slash um I don't know, confide, Mm. confide about something that happened to me on Instagram um, because I feel safe now. But when it happened, I felt a little funky. So I'm obsessed with the Jeffrey Epstein case. And I recently like I've been obsessed with it since like 2018. And before I started doing blind items, I made like a bunch of TikToks about Jeffrey Epstein, not like informational ones, just like 
meme ones kind of. So, you know, some people followed me because of that. And then recently I did my Jeffrey Epstein podcast episode and a bunch of people came in, Epstein, Epstein, Epstein. I'm talking to them in the DMs and somebody slid in and they were like, you know, I think Big E is still alive, like Daddy Epstein or something like that. And, you know, I get so many DMs. I was just like, yeah, ha ha, like catch him on the island or yeah, something yeah, like yeah, that, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah. I didn't think anything of it. And then he was like, what do you think of his like egg-shaped penis? Because that's what all the victims say. And I was like, yeah, I was like, oh yeah, egg-shaped or like something like that. I was just, you know, sometimes you just reply. Then he starts, and I'm saying it's a he, but it was like one of those accounts where like they don't post pictures of their face. So I, you know, it just seemed like a he. Then he starts saying all this nice stuff about Jeffrey Epstein. And I'm like, okay, I thought we were both being sarcastic, but like, wait, what? So then I don't respond. And the next day I get a bunch of these videos and you know how like K-pop stands will make fan edit videos of someone walking and it'll be like, don't drop that crown. And then it will go into like a photo montage of them. (laughs) And somebody did that with Jeffrey Epstein. And it was like, I'm the, I'm here in town. And then it's like Epstein on the Island, Epstein at his penthouse, Epstein with Trump. And I was like, did you make a fan edit of Jeffrey Epstein? I was like, what the hell is going on? And the account was weird too. It was all this conspiracy stuff, but I just thought it was someone who was like normal (laughs) anyway. And then the next time I went, back there it was like this account has been suspended blah 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 so I was like somebody must have reported them but a Jeffrey Epstein fan like I (laughs) would have thought that you know I know we're divided yeah you know especially here in America but I would have thought a hundred percent of people wouldn't like him absolutely (laughs) but it's 99 percent yeah yeah at least I fucking hope I I have a bad feeling it's way less than 99%. Yeah. That like just like him. But okay, it is so interesting to me that like that he has followers because when you were telling me about this, I was kind of thinking about like Charles Manson and who yeah. was that other serial killer that was like hot? Ted Bundy? Ted Bundy. Yes. Yeah. And like, I feel like in 2021, there would be some girlies making some edits about them. Yes. It's like absolutely insane. It's just like, I don't know. It's it's pretty wild there. And I, I think they say a lot of male serial killers in prison, there always will be ladies writing to them. So I don't know what that means for us. Probably nothing good. <laughs> no, absolutely. It's just also weird that they were like accused using you or like we're like oh Shannon this is a perfect place to like talk about my (laughs) show like this I'm like I don't think you listen to the podcast I'm pretty against uh child traffickers (laughs) (laughs) oh my god that's so weird yeah like you're like what what gave off that (laughs) I like what impression am I giving off yeah that is so wild I guess they're just messaging that to like literally anyone who will listen but I feel like when you have an interaction with someone like this that you just get you're like get such a skeevy feeling that you're like I talked to this person dude it's so weird and then someone liked my TikTok who's like icon their avatar was like Jeffrey Epstein's face and I'm like why would you put his face as your avatar choose like literally any other face so I mean who knew there's like a little secret society of Epstein heads out there (laughs) that's so wild yeah so what is that like why did these murders etc have like a fan base I don't know I feel like anything screwed up out there is gonna have a fan base and in posting Epstein videos not to get like too dark Mm -hmm. but people have come on and like there was a a lot of the people involved in the Epstein case were professors at universities and there was a Rutgers professor who literally said that You know, in some countries, the age of consent is 14, and he doesn't think that what Jeffrey Epstein did was that bad because women nowadays, a 15 year old today, you know, back in the day would be like a 60 year old because they were having children so early and things like that. So it's really dark. Like, there are some people out there who are like, 14 year old is basically a full grown woman. And 
I, I feel like you and I kind of grew up the same way, you know, in an honors math class at age 14, I was so far from being a woman. Are you kidding me? Absolutely. Like, like that is so <laughs> ridiculous, but there are obviously people that think like that, like even yeah, like, we talked about Scott Disick and yes, and uh, Drake and stuff like that. Like maybe obviously not to the extent of like uh, human trafficking, but definitely but preying still, on young girls. Yeah. And it's so gross too, because like Scott Disick, they're always eighteen, and it's like I have seen there are hot twenty-four year olds, there are smoke shows who are twenty-six. There's no feasible reason to go for an 18 year old unless it has to do with a power imbalance that you're in, interested in literally literally yeah. and like I always think a lot of the girls that he's dating look like they're in their 20s yeah like or like they look like they're 21 25 or whatever but obviously their maturity is of an 18 yeah. year old and I think that's like so disgusting wait okay what do you think is creepier a guy dating an 18 year old who looks like she's 25 or a guy dating a 25 year old who looks like she's 16 PJ, repeat I, was, I literally blanked okay. You know when like people explain like like <laughs> math problems yes, or, or like yeah. or like literally like board game instructions and you're like yeah. or like they say that they just introduce themselves and you're just like I literally have no idea what you just said. You shake a hand, yeah, yeah. They're telling you their name and you're like I'm good. How are you? Yeah. And then you're like Oh no, wrong thing. Yeah. Okay, do you think it's creepier if Scott Disick were to date an 18 year old? She looks like she's you know 30 or if he's dating like a 30 year old who dresses like a little girl I don't know I like I think that it's creepier when the that their actual age is is younger but yeah we talked about Ariana Grande like her career I was thinking of her yes, yes like yeah. it, it has all been about like almost like dressing like a little kid Yes. I even think about like just um, hair removal, women's hair removal yes. and stuff like that. We're getting yeah. so, I hope no one's listening. <laughs> We're getting <laughs> so dark. We're getting, yeah, <laughs> n- now now we're taking it conspiracy. It's my fault. It's like, I can't say anything for over an hour without taking it to like a dark place. Literally. I feel like sometimes I'm talking to my friends and they're like, Tori, that's fucking insane what you just said. And I'll be like, <laughs> Shannon would get it. <laughs> like- <laughs> no, dude, I a hundred percent would. Yeah. So I'm, I'm with you there. It'll have to be a podcast for another time, but yeah. like, I'm with, I'm with you on okay, that train. Good. Well, thanks for sharing your This Week in Petty. Hopefully nothing like that I've only ever had like negative things about the way I talk (laughs) I've been there (laughs) but that's just being a a woman in podcasting and one time I told people to vote I didn't even say vote for the Dems but I just said vote I said flex your democratic muscle and I got buried by somebody like it's like we live in a democracy the word is not you know it's such a weird time of the internet yeah I'd be like apply your sunscreen liberally and someone would be like (laughs) what do you mean I'm like no I just meant lots of sunscreen (laughs) literally that is such a good plug also just to wear your SPF like (laughs) yeah wear the SPF oh my god ugh people are so fucking annoying nowadays (laughs) Oh my God. Well, thank you so much for coming on. This was super fun and really informative. <laughs> yeah. Thank you for having me on. I feel we could, we could continue talking for like six hours. I feel like, um, I feel like I've known you. I feel like we grew up together or something. Sometimes the only thing that um, stops me from talking on this podcast is editing. <laughs> this, is, <laughs> this is why I like stay tuned for my streaming career because I feel like I could just talk straight for six hours and then I just wouldn't have to edit it so I hear that I hear that where can the listeners find you on TikTok and listen to your podcast uh yeah I'm everywhere at fluently forward it's two words but I spell it like it's just one (laughs) and the podcast it's on Spotify it's on Apple Podcasts. I think it's on iHeartRadio I need to get it more places but um that's where it is now so fluently forward everywhere everyone go listen to our podcast it's so good I messaged Shannon on Monday and I was like literally the only reason I got out of bed was the Kaler podcast I was like <laughs> I can 
You know, I don't know if this is you, but I got into podcasts because I was desperately trying to distract myself from thinking yes. about anything. So I'm like, yes. I can get up, uh, make a coffee and listen to this podcast. Perfect. No, isn't it horrible? I can't even like take a shit on the toilet without having two people's voices in my head talking about something. It's like, it's the opposite of meditation. Oh, absolutely. I need like seven, <laughs> seven yes. things. I going. need a choir to yeah. be angrily yelling at me as I do the smallest tasks around Literally. the apartment. My therapist was like, do you think you use like your phone to distract from like feeling things? I was like, not me. <laughs> like that. I'm like, I'm going to block you on my phone <laughs> yeah. for that one. <laughs> Anyways, it was so nice to have you and everyone go check out Fluently Forward. And there you have it. Thank you so much for listening. And thank you, Shannon, for joining me on today's episode. My apologies to George (laughs) Shambhalopoulos for absolutely butchering his name on this podcast, but that's pretty par for the course for an RTBP episode. If you enjoyed today's episode, you can leave us a rating on Apple Podcasts and Spotify. That's a new feature that was just released this week. So if you listen to this podcast on Spotify, I would appreciate a rating. You can also follow along on all socials at RTBP Podcast. I hope you are safe and healthy out there. As always, I'm your host, Tori, and I'm ready to be petty. See you soon. Bye.